and good morning and welcome to our friends from the media who have joined us this morning, to our faculty and staff who are here, particularly senior staff, to our alumni and friends who have made the trip uh, in for the uh, press conference. I appreciate you taking the time to come in and join us. And of course, to members of the Big Red uh, football team who are here with us this morning. The search for the 26th head coach of Cornell football began immediately after Jim Knowles resigned on de December 23rd uh, to join one of his uh, previous mentors, David Cutcliffe, at, at Duke University. And uh, I have to be honest and tell you that since that day until about 6.30 the night before last, it's been a really uh, intense, thorough, uh, search for our new head coach because we're at a time where we really need terrific leadership and we need someone to take us forward in the Ivy League and uh, we really feel that we have found that, that gentleman. So it was a month and four, four days ago that, that this search started looking for the eighth Roger J. Weiss head coach of football. Kent Richard Austin is our new man. He's our new coach. Four-time academic All-American and a Hall of Famer at Old Miss. He was a three-year starter back at starter quarterback and ranks third all-time in passing at Old Miss with Eli Manning and Romero Miller, some names that I'm sure many of you know. Kent formerly held the NCAA record for best pass completion percentage in a game, 94.7%, and he threw for 8,000. For, I'm sorry, for 6,184 yards, which is quite an accomplishment. After graduation and foregoing numerous postgraduate fellowships in the pursuit of a Rhodes Scholarship, which the school wanted Kent to pursue, Kent played a year with the St. Louis Cardinals and then nine seasons in the Canadian Football League. As a professional in the CFL, Kent is one of only four quarterbacks to throw for over 6,000 yards with the likes of Doug Flutie from Boston College and Tom Clements from Notre Dame. He threw for 6,225 yards in a season. He's a two-time Grey Cup champion at quarterback. He won the 1989 Grey Cup MVP award at quarterback, throwing for 474 yards in that game and three touchdowns. And he's a quarterback who calls and has called every play in his entire career. In a total of 15 seasons in the CFL, Ken won four championships. He won two as a player, one as an assistant coach, offensive coordinator, and one as a head football coach. The 2007 CFL Coach of the Year, he's coached two CFL MVPs in the last five years of his career. Both were quarterbacks. Ken was inducted in the Saskatchewan Plaza of Honor, their Hall of Fame, and I believe Kent will relate particularly well to Cornell student athletes because while at Old Miss, he earned academic All-SEC, an SEC Postgraduate Scholarship, an NCAA Postgraduate Scholarship, and a National Football Foundation and College Hall of Fame Scholar Athlete Award. We wanted a winner, and we got a winner. But as I found out in the last month plus four days, we got way, way more than a winner. We, we have a gentleman who has character, <coughs> ethics, approaches the game the right way for the right reasons. He's a family man. He's intensely com competitive and uh, determined. And uh, in his last two years at Ole Miss, where they've gone nine and four, two consecutive seasons and won two Cotton Bowls, I can tell you that he's a relentless recruiter because 90% of the time I caught up with Ken, he was on the way to, on the way to a recruit's house, on the way back from a recruit's house or in a guidance office. And so that I know that, that, that he's fully enmeshed uh, in, in recruiting as well. So, Kent, uh, I'm personally thrilled to have you leading our program. You have a wonderful family who's with us this morning. And uh, we have Kendall at home who's a senior in high school, who's being a senior in high school. She's a straight-A student, a brilliant young, brilliant young woman. But it's so great to have you and your family here. And uh, I couldn't be more thrilled. So to the podium, Kent.
I didn't accomplish half of that. <laughs> good, good news is I get to speak before Susan Murphy instead of afterwards. Uh, my meeting with her uh, really made me sit up and take notice and pay very close attention to the quality of the individuals here at this university. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming out. I see some familiar faces, the people that I met with, Tom and others. Uh, I want to personally thank uh, Director of Athletics, Andy Noel, for uh, a really special opportunity. And we, we really believe this is a special opportunity, not just for myself professionally, uh, but for my family as well, who are here. Um, we got to drive around yesterday and see how beautiful Ithaca is. Um, it's a very unique place. And, and we're very, very excited as an entire family to be here, not just as your head football coach. Uh, Andy, I want to thank you for the trust and faith that you put in me. Um, I know there were a lot of good candidates. Uh, there are a lot of good coaches and a lot of quality individuals uh, throughout the nation that you could choose from, and I'm sure we're very, very interested in this job. Uh, the trust and the faith that you put in me, I promise you will be honored. It will be honored by myself and the staff that I, that I put together. Uh, when I was up here interviewing, uh, it was really uh, clear to me why Cornell is such a special place. Uh, and it's directly related to the quality of the individuals that are here at this university. Uh, not just the faculty that I met, uh, but also the students uh, that I met. Everybody was sharp. Uh, they were intelligent, to say the least. Uh, that's an understatement. Uh, and they, they had an authentic commitment to pursue excellence in their given areas. That was something that really left a, la a lasting impression with me because I wanted to work at a place where people got that. Uh, individuals uh, authentically pursued that in a way that was meaningful, in a way that was impactful to the individuals that they um, uh, related to on a daily basis, and certainly in an environment that I think is conducive to success, uh, both as an uh, individual coach and also as a, as a person, as a husband, and a, and a father. Um, I will maintain <coughs> and pursue that same commitment for the football program. Uh, let's make no mistake, uh, we're not in this to be competitive. All right? we're, we're in this to be champions. There will be only one goal as a team, only one goal, and that is to win an Ivy League championship. Because really, there's no other reason why you play. You play to be the best, and we will pursue that goal with a steadfast commitment. It will cost something to get there. It always costs something to get there. Uh, and we will do it in a fun environment, an environment that our, that our players will respond to in a positive way. Uh, and we will build into the lives of our players in a way that is lasting and meaningful and not just with our words, but with our actions. Uh, any other goal that we set, quite frankly, is not worthy of the time commitment, and quite frankly, it's not worthy of the position that we've been honored to receive here at Cornell. So that will be our goal. That in mind, though, I also want to state that the reason we coach is not just to win. Uh, winning, we understand, is part of the deal. We, we get that as coaches, believe me, and we know that we have to win. And, and I like to win, and I am very competitive. Uh, but more importantly, the reason we coach is because it gives us an opportunity, as I stated, to build in the lives of our young men, uh, to, to teach them how to be great leaders, and in doing so, teaching them that to lead, first and foremost, requires the ability to serve and to understand that. And we will teach servant leadership in our model here at Cornell and in this football program. Uh, after all, greatness Greatness is not defined by what you have, or what you drive, or the house that you live in, but greatness is defined by your willingness to do something for somebody else. Greatness is defined by how much you're willing to build in somebody else's life. And that's what we will believe as a staff. That's how we will pursue our goals. We will do it the right way. We will do it with, we will outwork the people that we coach uh, against, I hope. And certainly we'll build a staff that will have that, uh, certainly have those goals in mind. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody that was instrumental, and many of you are in this room, uh, for bringing me and my family here to Cornell for such a wonderful opportunity. I cannot tell you how excited we are and how much I want to get here, get to work, roll up my sleeves, uh, and, and build uh, uh, an expectation of winning here, right? and build an expectation and a culture of, 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 of winning that permeates throughout the entire football program in every area. That's what we're here to do. And, and that's what we will achieve. Again, my family and I want to thank everybody. We're, we're, we truly are blessed. We truly are blessed to be here. Thanks again. Thank you, Ken. Inspiring words. Before
before Ken takes some Q&A, I'd like to invite to the podium Dr. Susan Murphy, Vice President for Student and Academic Services, who has long been known as one of our uh, most steadfast football fans and cheerleaders. And uh, it's Susan's support, coupled with the support of alumni and friends, that allows us to invite and welcome such a terrific coach to Cornell. So Susan, the podium is yours. Andy, thank you uh, very much. Um, on behalf of the trustees and President Scorton and Provost Kent Fox, all of whom heard a lot about Kent Austin this weekend, it is really my honor and pleasure to welcome you as the Roger J. Weiss head football coach and to welcome Shelley and Cassidy and Wesley. And Cassidy and Wesley, please tell Kendall we can't wait to meet her firsthand as, as well. Um, we are really thrilled to have all of them here. I had the pleasure of meeting Kent when he first came to campus as part of the interview process. And I've interviewed a lot of people over my 32 years at Cornell, 16 of which were in admissions. And every once in a while you have an interview with somebody and you just know something has clicked. And Kent, I knew that as soon as you and I spent five minutes together. Um, I thought to myself, if we can figure out how to land this gentleman as part of our program, we will have accomplished something great for Cornell football and for Cornell athletics. Andy has given you uh, the credentials. Uh, this is a man who knows what it takes to win as a player and as a system coach and as a head coach at the college level, at the NFL and at the CFL. But more importantly, he knows what it feels like to be a winner. And I think it takes both to accomplish that level. Um, so I'm uh, absolutely thrilled. Now you can imagine as the Chief Student Affairs Officer, as much as I care about winning, and I am a passionate fan, uh, as people who know me know, um, it is Kent's commitment that you just heard now articulated about his commitment to excellence in all that we do that rang the chord with me. I'm confident he knows about what's excellence on the field. That I have no question about. But he is also equally committed to excellence as human beings and excellent as, excellence as students. He knows what that means given his own academic uh, experience. But this is a gentleman who could be a head coach anywhere, literally. And he has made a very conscious decision to join the Ivy League and to join Cornell University. And that just makes this uh, announcement, in my opinion, all the more special. He knows the challenges he's facing with Cornell football. We're on that upward uh, hill to get to the championship. He knows the world of the Ivy League. Uh, we're probably not going to be in the Cotton Bowl again, um, as you've experienced. But that's not what he was looking for. He was looking for a place where he could coach and, as he said, teach young men who are here because they want to be the best they can be as athletes, the best they can be as students, and the best they can be as human beings. And to have someone with those values lead your football program makes my job as the Chief Student Affairs Officer very easy. So to all of the Austin family, we welcome you to the family of Cornell. It's official. Wesley and uh, Kent have their red ties on, so you know they understand the rules. I have my football scarf on that I, I'll uh, show. We'll make sure Shelley and Cassidy and Kelly will get you some Cornell red stars. Um, so welcome to the Cornell family and also welcome to the Ithaca community. We are going to be very fortunate to have you as members of this very special place all of us call home. Thanks for being with us. Okay, Ken Austin to the podium and uh, any questions that anyone in the uh, audience has for Ken or for me. Okay, can you talk a little bit about some of the challenges you face in recruiting in the Ivy League? Well, obviously we have to find the right fit for Cornell. And I think so much of that work has to be done intelligently up front to make sure that we don't pursue individuals um, that we have a very low probability of getting. Uh, it, 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 it's similar in aspect to some of the re uh, recruits that we try to recruit to the University of Mississippi. Uh, as an example, if there is a five-star running back that's in Baton Rouge, that LSU was all over, the, the odds of us getting him to Ole Miss probably aren't very good. Uh, and to pursue him with resource and time and energy is probably not a very intelligent way of, of approaching it. So 
We will identify the, the type of athlete, both academically and athletically. Uh, we will have uh, standards uh, that, will, that will mesh both properly uh, and go after those, uh, those individuals once they're identified up front before we spend a lot of time and resource uh, with, a, with a low probability. That's not a very uh, good uh, uh, way to succeed, in, in my opinion. Yeah, Brian Delaney with the Ithaca Journal. At what, at what point during this process did you really feel like this was going to be a good match for you? <coughs> well, I got a really good feel when I was here. I, I alluded to that and tried to articulate that probably not very well uh, in, in my speech. You know, people make the place, and in, in, in my opinion. And um, my goals as a coach and, and what I want to do in my life and with my family and what we're trying to pursue Maybe a little different than uh, you know than other coaches that you know, coached at the level that I was coaching at, uh, and uh, we want to be in a place where we, we truly have an impact in every area, and and, and that's authentic. Uh, I wanted to be at a place where um, the standards were very high, uh, the excellence was was readily uh, there for anybody to see in every area uh, of this college, uh, in, a, in, a, in an area that uh, had diversification for my children. Uh, and, and also an, an opportunity to coach young men that are committed uh, for uh, different reasons. Not necessarily better reasons, but for different reasons. Reasons that attracted me as a coach. Uh, meeting Andy, uh, I spent a lot of time with Andy. Uh, he is a, a, a very bright, sharp uh, man, but, but more importantly, he's got a great heart. And, and I think he does it the right way. And his motivation is pure in, in how he pursues uh, putting together uh, a staff of coaches in, in every sport um, uh, that, that will honor the position here at, here at Cornell and are great coaches uh, and coaches that, uh, that, that, that truly do a great job with the men that they, uh, men and women that they coach. So uh, I, just, I, I just felt like uh, it's really important to be meshed with a director of athletics that I'm going to be working very, very closely with where we were like-minded, uh, we had similar beliefs, and, and we, had, we had a similar vision that we were trying to cast and the proper steps to achieve that vision. And I just felt that with Andy. Uh, additionally, I felt that um, uh, the, the, there was just a, a groundswell of support here uh, that, that uh, really wanted to get this thing turned. And, uh, and, and there was a real passion for, for Cornell uh, and Cornell football. And um, quite frankly, that challenge is uh, very appealing <laughs> as a coach. And that, uh, so there's many other reasons, but uh, those are just some of some of the other ones that that, uh, that I highlighted uh, in my acceptance speech uh, were some of the reasons, strong reasons that attracted me uh, to this job. Kent, how much do you know about the personnel that's already in place, and when do you plan on making a determination about the assistant yeah. coaches? Uh, good questions. Uh, I don't. I know a little bit about the personnel that's in place. I assume you're referring to the players. Yes. Okay. Uh, I know a little bit, but uh, that's part of the uh, early on process. Uh, I'll get here as quick as I can and, and start making those evaluations. Obviously, the key right now is to put together quality staff, a staff of coaches that are experienced, that know how to win, uh, that can recruit, uh, and that are a fit, that, that are a fit for, for this unique job here. Uh, once, uh, uh, but both will, be, both will be occurring at the same time. Uh, there's a lot of hours in the day, and I plan to use every minute of them uh, to get those questions answered. Uh, but, but we're certainly going to put together a quality staff of guys that, that at, least, at least that I know personally, not necessarily have to know personally, but, but certainly uh, two or three that I know personally know how to win and how to coach and do it the right way. Andy, at what point did you know that Kent was your man? Was there something that really stood out or a point that you really made this decision easy? Uh, that, that is a great question. Um, I was actually very, very impressed with a number of our candidates. And I didn't mention it before, but we had about 65 to 70 that applied online and then another 40 or 50 who sent materials in. So it was over 110, 115 individuals who were interested in this position. And uh, when I met Kent and uh, had time with him uh, at dinner on two occasions, and then in the regular interview process where we sat down with Steve Erber, Associate Director of Athletics who works with football. Steve and I had a chance for a couple hours to talk about the nitty gritty X's and O's and recruiting. Um, I, I had a very, very strong feeling that this was a terrific candidate. Prior to that, I had recommendations from two individuals who I respect 
so much in football, that know so much more than I do about football, X's and O's, and, and all the nuances of football, that said to me, this is the best coach they've ever been around. And one of them was a professional head coach, and one of them was uh, a coordinator uh, in the, at the college level. And um, I heard that, I was excited to hear that, and then I had to do my own uh, thinking and figuring about that. And, and as I spent hour after hour with Kent, I think it was 12 hours the first weekend that uh, Kent was here, uh, driving back and forth to the Syracuse airport and then the, the dinners and, and all the other discussions, I, I, was, I felt like Susan felt. I felt almost immediately, but then had to reinforce it continually through the process that this is a terrific person, this is a terrific coach, and how can we how can we do this? How can we pull this off? And quite frankly, it took Susan Murphy and Mary Opperman and David Scorton and our senior staff and a terrific group of uh, members of the Cornell Football Association. Everybody pulled together in a united way to support whoever it was that we were going to hire, and then internally we felt you know, that Kent was the man. So uh, it was a process and I think a very broad and open and fair process, but Kent started early on the top and, and stayed there. Thank you for the question. Andy, could you, just, I'm sorry, uh, sure. elaborate a little bit further on the qualities you found in Kent that, you, that made you believe that he'd be able to recruit that student athlete that, that you're looking to get? Okay, so I have to remember your focus a little bit on recruiting, but, but, but more broadly, um, I, ha I have to be honest and say my bias from the outset was I want to find a coach who I believe, and, and others that know more than I do believe, are equal to or better than every coach in the Ivy League. Somebody that can, can stack up as a coach with experience and knowledge and drive and determination and will with anybody in the league. Because if you don't do that, you, it's going to be very, very difficult to ever get out of the middle of the pack if, if that's where you've been traditionally. So I, I wanted a winner, and, and I was very, very focused on that from the beginning. But as I got to know Kent, and as I heard him speak about um, the role of the head coach and the impact that he wants to make and how he wanted to make it, um, I became more and more impressed and, and actually more aware that, that I was only looking at a part of the picture. And it, and it was the picture that was driving me early. But when the combination of that will and determination combined with ethics and character and a feeling of family, a feeling of, of being firm and challenging to the players, but loving the players, really motivating and encouraging them. I felt like, like this was the guy. And then relative to recruiting, um, from the first couple conversations that I had with Kent and then the many that I had following, I, I wasn't kidding when I said almost every time I spoke to him, he was involved in recruiting an athlete, a five-star athlete, uh, athletes that, that he took away from uh, a lot of the big time uh, SEC schools because of his own, and I, I got this from the head coach, not from Kent, I got this from Coach Houston, uh, that, that, that his, his drive and determination and his focus and single-mindedness in recruiting really was paying dividends for Ole Miss, and I knew that, that's, that we needed to have that at Cornell as well. We, we need to have somebody who enjoys recruiting, who knows that you win with people and you win with student athletes. You can't do it all with X's and O's. And so I, I just, I just love, um, you know, the total package that I thought he brought to the table, and, and, and recruiting was part of it, and personality and drive is part of it. I hope I answered your question. Yeah. Uh, let me bring up a potentially controversial topic. Um, the word excellence was mentioned, was mentioned. And I think that's a perfect word. We should be striving for excellence. I'm a member of the faculty here at Cornell. If I'm good enough. I can be elected to the National Academy of Engineers. I can win a Nobel Prize. Our football team has a ceiling. It is not allowed currently to compete for a national championship. I know the history of the Ivy League and some of the reasons why it was won had to do with football. I'm just curious whether or not you're interested in taking up the mantle to try to remove that ceiling on our football team. That's an easy one. <laughs> well, it is while I'm here. Great yeah. question. It really is. It's a really good question. Um, you know, excellence is, 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 is a um, 
word that would have many definitions depending on who, you, who your audience is. And, and certainly right now, the goal would be to achieve the top on the field, to achieve the top. And the top for us in the Ivy League is the Ivy League Championship. And, uh, and, that, and that's the ceiling that is there for on-field performance. Uh, but, it, but it's much deeper than that. And uh, uh, I didn't take this job and accept the position just to win an Ivy League Championship. Because, like yourself, we have student athletes who probably have those same dreams academically and, and will be our future leaders in this country. I, I get that. And, and so, so the, the, my, my ability to build into their life, my ability to push them to achieve excellence, uh, transcends the football field. And, 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 and coaching here at Cornell, you, you better understand that as a coach. My staff better understand that. Uh, we will get players that will understand the value. They really will understand the value of what that really means and what that looks like and how to achieve that on a daily basis. That, that the little things do matter. Because uh, if you take care of the little things, the big things always take care of themselves. Uh, the little things of, of how we're going to keep our locker room, how, how that's going to look. How are, we going, how are we going to relate to our players on a daily basis? Are you going to really be a teammate or aren't you? You know, is that real? Do you really care that your individual success is directly tied to the success of the people around you? The players that get that uh, are always the best players. Because they know that their success is tied directly to the success of the guys next to them. Because it's a team sport. Uh, but, but again, that goes off the field as well. So, it, so a true teammate is one that truly does care. Truly does care for their teammate. Uh, how they relate to their coaches. How diligent are they going to be in the classroom and also in the football classroom. How they prepare and watch film. How they prepare on the football field. What kind of, of a level of commitment. And what are they willing to, to give up. And what are they willing to sacrifice to be great? All those things matter. Uh, as far as pushing the ceiling past what we have here, uh, specifically to answer your question, uh, I would like to compete for whatever is out there, whatever is the best. Uh, but I'm also realistic in understanding what those constraints are currently. We'll take one more question. If there is one, then you'll have opportunities to do a couple of one on ones. So is, if there's one more question. Uh, Ken. It's been a number of years since the last Ivy League title here, a number of coaches have come through. Um, why do you think you can win here, and why is what makes your plan different? Not a good question. <laughs> I can answer that one. <laughs> you don't know Ken Austin. <laughs> system um, uh, uh, is the only way to approach it. But I know that it's worked for me. Right? And, and why, would, uh, why would I take this job if I didn't believe that that same belief system could work here in the same manner? Right? I, 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 I didn't come here to lose. Right? And if I didn't think we could win, I wouldn't be here. I promise you that. Uh, and by the amount of people that have called me that want to come work here, knowing their track record, several of them who are very, very, very successful um, and have experience in the Ivy League, uh, they believe the same thing. We will recruit uh, the type of athlete that can compete for a championship at this level. That's first and foremost. That's, that's what we recruit. Uh, that fit Cornell in every area that we've already discussed but that can compete on the field athletically to win. Uh, we have to be smart in how we do that. And we have to make sure that we don't pursue individuals that, that are, like our probability is way low, like I, like I stated earlier. Uh, but pursuing anything less than that isn't going to give us a chance. Uh, like, like, like Andy alluded to, there's, there's only so, so far you can take X's and O's. Um, they're overrated, trust me. All right, X's and O's are overrated. Uh, the, the people that win are the players on the football field. And we have to go get great football players, uh, and, and we will do that. And we will pursue that, I promise you, uh, with a level of intensity that's worthy of, of the job that I've been given. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. I was remiss uh, a minute. I just want to say one more thing real quickly. I also want to thank 
and, um, and truly thank uh, Coach Houston Nutt and the opportunity he gave me at Ole Miss and bring me there for two years and being so supportive in this process and supportive with Andy. Uh, he's a great coach. Uh, he's a really, really good person. And I want to thank Ole Miss as well for the opportunity they gave me and allowing me to come here. Um, and we had, we had a wonderful time there as well. And there's a lot of good people there. But we're really excited about being here. We can't wait to get started. Thank you.